This presentation will address recovery strategies. There are four main types of recovery strategies. Physiological strategies, for example, cool down and hydration. Neural strategies, for example, hydrotherapy and massage. Tissue damage strategies, for example, cryotherapy. And psychological strategies, for example, relaxation. This video will help you to understand recovery strategies a little bit better and help to determine their main features and benefits for performance. Physiological strategies include cool down and hydration. Cool down is often considered the very first recovery strategy that an athlete can use. It occurs pretty much immediately after performance and is often seen as the most important because if cool down is effective, then the further recovery strategies that follow are likely to be more effective. A cool down should be active, which means that the athlete should be moving when it occurs. It should be gradually uh, decreasing in intensity from the workout previously. It should go for between 5 to 10 minutes or maybe a little bit longer depending on the activity. And it could include jogging, walking, swimming or cycling. And it does assist the body to return to pre-exercise temperature. There are a number of benefits of cool down, but one of the most important ones is the fact that it can reduce what's called blood pooling. Now when someone exercises, blood rushes to the muscles that need the oxygen uh, and, and hence the blood to function. And when someone just completely stops exercising, the blood will continue to function, but the usual way that the blood gets back to the heart is, is from the veins um, taking the blood back the veins tend to, to stop pretty much straight away and they require the work of the muscles to help push the blood back. So this actually ceases. So that's why an active recovery or an active cool down is important. So that slow movement keeps the muscles moving, keeps the pressure on the veins to move the blood back to the heart. And this removes products like lactic acid, which if it stays in the muscle, is going to cause a lot of problems uh, in the muscle causing swelling and pain and that really um, slows down recovery. So the cool down helps to recirculate the blood and remove the lactic acid. So there are many other benefits of cool down including reducing ventilation rate, blood flow and adrenaline, removal of waste as mentioned, more specifically lactic acid which reduces muscle stiffness and soreness and sp reduces spasms and also cramping but it also reduces what's called delayed onset muscle soreness. So through the removal of the lactic acid and also the fact that it can control some of the inflammation that occurs uh, when someone exercises very intensely, uh, the cool down can help to remove all of the waste products and help the muscle uh, return uh, to its normal state a little bit more quickly. A good cool down should include static stretching. Static stretching lengthens muscles and realigns them. So what that means is it puts them back in their right place again and lengthens them. So when we do really intense exercise, our muscles tend to, to shorten as a result of that. And so stretching re-lengthens them and realigns them and it relaxes them, improves range of motion and this reduces the risk of further injury when an athlete returns to training after their intense uh, activity. The next recovery strategy is hydration. Now hydration should be part of pre, during and post event management and basically uh, fluid loss eventually leads to dehydration and dehydration can be characterized by uh, increased pulse rate, increased core body temperature, decreased blood pressure, a decrease in water in the cells and a gradual decline in circulatory function. So if all of this occurs, what happens is the athlete's recovery is going to be a lot slower. The body needs blood to be flowing around the body to take new fresh uh, nutrients to the parts that need it most. And dehydration tends to basically uh, reduce circulatory function. So it's going to reduce uh, the blood flow to those particular areas that need it most. So in general, thirst is a poor indicator of dehydration and the best way to find whether someone is dehydrated is for them to check their urine. Dark urine generally represents dehydration. And 
hydration levels can generally be measured by a weight difference that occurs after training. So an athlete should have 1.5 litres of fluid for every 1 kilogram of body weight lost. So this means if an athlete weighs 2 kilograms lighter after exercise, this means that they need to drink 3 litres of fluid over the next 3 to 6 hours to replace that lost fluid. So this is generally best achieved through intermittent sipping over an extended period. So sips rather than big gulps and severe dehydration um, generally may require 24 to 48 hours to enable fluids to be totally replaced. So you can see why it's so important to maintain hydration because if someone's dehydrated, then they're not going to be able to train or perform uh, for quite a few days. And that's pretty bad for an elite athlete. Sports drinks are often encouraged because of their high sodium and potassium content, which is thought to stimulate thirst, which is a, a good thing for athletes to help them to continue to, to consume fluid. Uh, soft drinks are not recommended because of their high sugar content, and carbonated drinks uh, are also not advised because they can bloat uh, the athlete. When considering the different types of sports drinks available, it's, it's interesting to think about the importance of carbohydrate because after very intense exercise or training, carbohydrate being the main source of energy uh, is generally uh, depleted as well as um, fluid depletion. So replacing fluid and carbohydrates at the same time can be very beneficial for an athlete. Now, sports drinks are generally divided into three different categories hypotonic isotonic and hypertonic hypotonic generally uh, is very high in electrolytes and has a very small carbohydrate content and uh, generally good for those that don't need um, lots of carbohydrate in their diet so those that are trying to control their weight such as jockeys and gymnasts and the isotonic and hypertonic drink contain a little bit more carbohydrates so for those that want to replace their fluid and increase their carbohydrate content at the same time, the isotonic or the hypertonic drink are probably better and the carbohydrate intake will help the athlete recover, particularly after high intensity endurance events where carbohydrate stores have been depleted. So just to sum up there, Hypotonic sports drinks can be beneficial after long sessions uh, and can help to replace depleted energy reserves uh, 60 minutes after exercise. Uh, but this could also be equally achieved by having a proper meal and drinking water. So in addition to hydration, uh, eating and replacing lost nutrients is very important to assist recovery.